I wanted to talk a little bit about these cards I've been making. What is up, Joe Crew? It is me, Joku DMD, and I'm here with another weekly story time. This time I'm not actually doing a shrip'em. I usually open a box of cards every week and tell a story, but this week um, I wanted to talk a little bit about these cards I've been making. You may have seen them on my YouTube shorts, and I wanted to just go into what I've been doing with that. So if this is your first time here and you want to subscribe, that would be really cool if you did, but if you don't, that's also fine. And if you're here again, welcome back. Thanks for coming by. And I want to just talk a little bit about some of these cards I've been making. So this is um this is uh one of my one of my favorite arts here. This is like Gear 5 Luffy. And this is a different kind of card I made where it has um it has an image hidden in the background. You can kind of see the Gear 5 Luffy, like the first panel of it. It's just like hidden. I call it mirage foiling. And if you hold it on certain angles, you can kind of see it says Gear 5 down there and has his uh has his face there ready to rumble on the back of all of my cards i have my logo and the great wave off kanagawa by katsushika hokusai and there's a reason why i put that wave on every card the reason why i do that is because i basically think that trading cards modern day trading cards are essentially our current version of japanese woodblock prints so japanese woodblock prints came around in the uh, mid to late 1800s and um Japanese woodblocks, woodblock prints came around in the 1800s and they were a means to access art because not everybody could afford art for their home and paintings. So artists were able to make prints out of wooden blocks and print those blocks onto paper and sell those prints for much cheaper so people could have art, which is, uh, you know, people wanted to access culture, which is what art is, it's access to culture. And that's really what trading cards are, their access to Japanese culture, especially Japanese trading cards. And there's a lot of similarities, like in woodblock prints, how you have the publisher and artist name and same in these cards, how there's the publisher and artist name in the, in the corners of the cards and stuff. Um, but yeah, so I've been making these fan cards and I've been putting this wave because I want to just kind of reference that and put it in your face or actually on my face here. Um, so that's the back of all these cards. And another thing that I realized actually was Japanese woodblock prints um, were often done in diptychs because there's only so much space in on a card where you could only put something on one page. And if you look at manga, a lot of manga has panels over two pages. So I started making diptych cards where on one side of the card is one panel of a page and then the other side of the card has the other panel of the page. And you know, you can kind of display them together if you have two of them to display the whole thing. Or if you just have the one, you can just take it around with you and appreciate both of those panels. Um, so I've been making these. I did one for like each character I really like right now that I could find these good panels for. I like this one of, I think you can guess who this is. Uh, this is a cool one. And I'm a really big fan of uh, Snake Man. So I actually went through the entire One Piece manga in color in three days and took all the images that I wanted. I've read it a couple times, so I was just kind of scanning through. I like this one a lot also. This is a really fun one. And I've been doing some other stuff with these as well, which I'll show a couple of those. I just think the sunny looks really good. I've been doing these all foil without any um, hollow foil, like reverse hollow foil block out. Um, this is my favorite set. So I did a set of these that it's basically, it's like the um, impel down into the war. So this was the first uh, shot where they're falling out of the sky. This was a really good two page spread. And then kind of the impel down crew shows up at the Paramount War and Buggy is psyched to, uh, show the world how great he is, which he's not wrong. But this shot's just so good. Ivankov and Luffy and Kuroko Boy. Um, and then here, uh, this was a, I like this moment. You probably all know what this is here. Luffy coming up and punching Peepaw in the face. Sorry, Grandpa. Get out of my way. Look how pissed he is. But there's just, the manga works really well for the, this. I feel like it's a, it's an art form that kind of lends itself to this style. And then of course, like the most, the most famous panels in the whole manga. I feel like this one where he's grabbing Luffy and Whitebeard's like, oh, my son, thank you. It's also really hard to show these in, um, in this form, but you can kind of see, you can get an idea of what they look like. They look like way cleaner and nicer in person, but of course, 
set two this is coming this is such a such an amazing moment yeah of course he can still fight the boys are back and then of course the most the most emotional moment here this one i'm probably also going to make a donut blocker at some point once we get blocker tokens that's going to be necessary shout out to steve that was steve's idea so when i make that i definitely i definitely will make it i have the shot but yeah so those are the diptych cards i've been doing and then i also did a series of um dons so these are like you know every straw hat looking really emotional i couldn't find jimbe um so i don't have a jimbe uh crying but somebody on facebook was kind enough to show me where that or show me that image and i went into the manga and found it in fishman island so i, I substituted vivi for jimbe but vivi will come out and jimbe will go in here once i print him i'm probably going to print him later today or tomorrow but yeah these are all just like fully holographic um i've been doing some reverse holographic or i commission art from artists to draw like Zoro's Dead Man game. I really like this one a lot, but you can see, you know, I'm blocking out some of the hologram here and doing a clear layer and adding some texture to it. So I think they're really fun. They, they look just like way, 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 way better in person. And then of course, Justus Captain Kido. So yeah, I think like down the line, people are gonna look at modern day trading cards and think about them in a similar way as we think about Japanese woodblock prints because they're giving people around the world access point to Japanese culture and be able to connect with one another through that, which is essentially what art does. Um, I studied all Japanese art history when I was in my undergrad. I have an undergraduate degree in uh, studio art and then I went on to become a dentist after that. But I love Japanese art. I love Japanese art history. I studied a lot of the cards. If you go back before the One Piece card game came out and look at some of the videos I was doing, I was buying all the One Piece cards from all the different One Piece card games that existed before that and kind of studying the composition and looking at the cards and the different feels. So I studied a lot of that and I met somebody with a printer and I was able to kind of start doing my own. Um, I have I, My focus was in screen printing in my undergraduate degree. So I have a lot of experience with printing. I've been about as old as the color printer. I've been using a printer, color printer since I was six years old and I love printing. I print on shirts, I print on pants, I print on rugs, I print on, I'm from Princeton. I have princeton.org, that's my new website. But all the work I'm doing, you can see it, it's uploaded at Kaizoku Cards on Instagram. So I'll leave a link to that in the description below if you wanna see some of the work that I've done. And I'd love to hear your feedback on what you think about them or things that you think would be exciting to do. I, I've also um, done like some leader cards and printing on the cases and stuff like that. But I'm more interested in just kind of making fan cards and exploring the manga and bringing the work to life in a different way where you can appreciate it um, in a portable on the go manner and kind of connect with people around that. I Like I mentioned, I am a dentist. I can't end without a dental tooth tip. And my dental tooth tip to you would be... It's a good idea to straighten your teeth. I've said this one a bunch of times, I think, actually. But straightening your teeth is good because um, you can actually have hygiene issues if you don't, if your teeth are less straight, because when they overlap, it can be harder to clean in certain areas. So if you're thinking about straightening your teeth, yeah, sure, there's aesthetic benefits, but actually for hygiene and just for your bite in general and long-term health, straightening your teeth actually is a good idea. And you can do most cases with clear aligners, either Sure Smile or Invisalign or whatever it is. So it's a good option to look into. If you want to ask me about it feel free um and if you're interested in checking out these cards check out kaizoku cards on instagram thank you so much and i'll see you guys next time